Hey, Stu. Tom, how you doing? Tactical Fitness Report with Stu Smith, podcast number eight, Building Mental Toughness. So one of the things to keep in mind, and I know that this has come up uh, a few times, I try to match the title of these so that if someone just went to the, to the internet and typed in Stu Smith Building Mental Toughness, they'll come up with the article that you wrote because you have good data beyond what we cover in the podcast. So just keep in mind, everyone, that the titles of these podcasts are close enough so that if you do a search, you should be able to find the, uh, the basic article. But this, is, this was the original title is, was Five Steps to Building Mental Toughness. And you wrote something really interesting here, Stu, and you and I were talking about this a little bit earlier today. And I'd like you to spend some time on this because I had never heard something like this exactly. But here is your quote. I've read some articles recently that have provoked me to explain qualities of mental toughness and why people fail challenging spec ops programs. And then you went on to, to describe in the article this whole issue of, of building mental toughness. So spend a, spend a moment and talk through this, what your reaction to these articles were and why that, why that got you started down this path. Sure. I, yeah, I've written several articles, have had chapters and books you know, on mental toughness. And uh, I think it's mental toughness can range in a wide variety of methods as well as concepts. Uh, it's not just, you know, I'm mentally tough, I can do push-ups forever, right? Or, you know, I don't get tired when I run, you know, because I mentally push myself. You know, it's, there's more to it than that. I mean, I think if you look at all the ways people can become mentally tough is typically it's, they're not nice situations right? They're, they're fairly stressful situations that, you know, if you can overcome and endure, uh, you will have an element of mental toughness in you that you will carry on for the rest of your life, right? So let's look at, you know, the young kid who grows up with a horrible childhood, maybe has childhood cancer, or an adult going through cancer. You know, these are types of things that have life or death stress situations that when you battle this every day and you come out on the other end, a, you know, well-rounded human, you know, that has just experienced that it makes life easier. So there, there's some unique studies out there um, that have actually called a lot of these things stress inoculations. Mm. So as we go through life, you know, whether it is a hard, you know, military fitness training, or it's a hard, challenging event, you know, in your childhood or teens that you've had to go through, you know, these are things that inoculate you from stress later on in your life when it really matters and it becomes, you know, a life or death situation versus a pass or fail situation. Yeah. You know, you said to me earlier that uh, one of the things that you thought was important was to get the definition of mental toughness down to a pretty narrow, um, a narrow point. Yes. You know, I, I think Jocko probably sums it <laughs> up the best. You know, he, he goes, you want to be what mentally tough, work, just get tougher. Yeah. Right. That's that in its essence is mental toughness. However, you can also describe it as, uh, finding ways to get comfortable when you're uncomfortable, yeah. right? You know, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, or, you know, however you want to phrase it, you know, there are uncomfortable events that you can put your body through, put your mind through that you have to find comfort in that and not feel the pain and, and kind of take it and focus on something else. Uh, probably one of the best definitions I've heard that puts it all all the types of mental toughness into one perfectly round ball is um, finding the fuel when the tank is empty. Yeah. Because if you think about that, that is a great quick little sentence that defines everything that, that can occur to you in life, whether that is emotional stress, 
physical stress, relationship stress, you know, whatever, you know, life and death stress, you know, all of those things, there comes a time when you just feel like quitting, but then something just has you to uh, stand up, get up, shake it off, and you keep on moving. You know, finding that fuel that keeps you moving is really, you know, the only thing that you can do to test your mental toughness. Like we can all say, because I have this motivational picture in my office <laughs> that I'm going to be mentally tough when it happens, but you know, it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. There's no article in there that's going to make you mentally tough that I've written. There's no book that's going to make you mentally tough. It's an event that you have successfully made it through and moved to the next side, a better person that is mental toughness. It is also resilience. We, we, we kind of, yeah. S- you know, the same, same definitions of mental toughness and resilience are, are, are right there, you know, parallel to each other. You know, one of the, one of the techniques that I know you use and I, I know others use, um, and, and Jocko is a great example of this is they have something they do every single day that puts them in that uncomfortable zone that they have to work their way through. And it's a way of continuing to remind you of that, that barrier you have to get yourself over of lethargy or fear or hesitancy or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, we have every day we have opportunities to test our mental toughness, right? Because we're always somewhere in a 24-hour time period, you are going to be tired. That is a form of being uncomfortable that is a form of discomfort that you can mentally just push on through and keep on moving you know it might help to have some caffeine too right but whatever it is you know whatever it is it's going to move you and keep you moving keep you uh, focused on that goal and that's the big thing like one of Jocko's biggest things I, I love to see is 430 alarm clock that's unbelievable. He takes a picture of that thing. I mean, four thirty every I day. Four thirty. I get up at five thirty and I start my workouts. I haven't tried a four thirty one unless I'm going on a long trip. I wake up early and get in a car early. But well, you you know you you you've adjusted my schedule from five thirty to before five o'clock in the morning because we have to do these podcasts at zero dark thirty to make it yes, work for our families, true. right? We are, um, you have three hour difference, but you know I would say that um, you know. Doing something every day, like training hard, um, getting up out of bed immediately, you know, when it's cold outside, um, you know, I always, I, when I do a PowerPoint presentation a lot, I show a picture of just dipping your toe in a swimming pool water uh-huh. at, you know, 5.30 a.m. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes you just don't want to get wet right? <laughs> whenever you are about to go for swim practice or you're just swimming on your own. You just don't feel like getting wet, but you get in there, you jump up. Well, first you've done two things already. One, you woke up and you're tired. Two, you got out of the house and you're about to go to a swimming pool. And now three, you're going to jump into the swimming pool and get wet. When you don't really feel like getting wet, you would be more comfortable sitting in bed. So you've just done three things that are going to make you more mentally tough than you were an hour before. Yeah. Unless that yeah, in, every in, single day, every single day, that's how you <laughs> build mental toughness. It's not a phrase that you're going to put in your head and it's automatically going to make you mentally tough. It's not a poster that you look at and get inspired. It is your constant preparation every single day. That's going to make you mentally tough for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and one of the things that you, in the list of five things, the first one you had was just wake up early to train or work or do anything. Uh, you know, and that's the, that's the, the marker that, that Jocko uses, right? He's the 430 guy. But, but there's that, that idea of, of just forcing yourself to set a limit and just say, I'm going to do that. Whether it's one morning you have to PT. Because with, with me being, I'm, I just happen to be on spring break out here from, from Columbia. But uh, soon I'll be back on the East Coast, but I have to be up early just to work. And so training here for me is not in the morning, it's in the, it's in the evening, because I have to be up at zero dark 30 to work, where once I get back on the East Coast, I'll train in the mornings. But, um, 
But just getting up, forcing yourself to get up to do something that you normally wouldn't do is, is just, that's the first step, I think, that you've, right. that you've identified. It's, right. it's part of our definition. Being comfortable or getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and then the that, second that's one. The first thing of the day. You can start off your day every day being a little bit more mentally tough than you were the day before by just getting up and get, getting moving. Yeah, and the second one you had, Stu, was, and, and you had the famous, the only easy day was yesterday. This was try something new uh, to force yourself into that zone. It, you know, trying new things is uncomfortable. Going new places, meeting new people is uncomfortable. Um, doing things that maybe you are, have a natural fear of doing. You know, I never liked heights. You know, I never liked climbing up really high, you know, doing obstacles, jumping out of planes. You know, that was a fear that I had to get over. You know, some people don't like darkness or claustrophobic. You know, those are fears that, you know, the more you practice these, the less, you know, the less they are going to be fears, right? And you are making yourself a little more mentally tough by challenging yourself in these very uncomfortable situations. You know, Stu, I still to this day struggle with heights, but um, people lost money with me during my training because they voted, they had, un, unbeknownst to us, they had wagered that I was the guy that would not go out of the plane. Wow. But I had no trouble. I, I Actually, I love to uh, to skydive and jump. How I like to do that when I just, heights were a challenge for me, I have no idea. But it wasn't the same. But anyway, the guys, they, they had bet that I was the guy that wouldn't go out of the plane. So, Yeah, you know, like I said, it's just one of those things that if you can, you can find something that makes you uncomfortable and find a way to do it, that is, you know, but like I said, be safe. You know, don't do something stupid. You know, th there are plenty of stupid things that make everybody uncomfortable, and you should listen to that part of your brain that says, maybe I shouldn't do this because this is pretty stupid. Right. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about natural fears that, you know, can make you a better person. Uh, also survival techniques. I mean, I consider swimming a survival skill. I don't mm. consider it anything else. Right? People should know how to swim and be comfortable in the water because God forbid you fall in the water, you could die. Right? By simply learning how to swim and get a little more comfortable in the water, that is the type of skills I'm talking about that make you a better person and, you know, can save your life one day. I'm not talking about going bungee jumping just because you, right. you want to, you know, well, and, and you know, these, these things that are challenging, Stu, I know I don't have as much, um, I don't have as much reason to deal with heights today as I used to have to. And it's the challenge for me. Heights is still to this day. It's still the challenge. One thing I've noticed, and I, I, I'm curious to know if you'd see the same thing. If you have that issue that you've dealt with and you've tried, you've, you've pushed your way through, you know, and it's been years ago, if you don't keep pushing your way through it, that comes back. I mean, it, it, came, it's oh, come, it comes back to me. You know, it's just, it's just like shooting. You know, it is a, is a skill easily lost. Yes. If you don't practice it. So not that you have to be a, a member of a skydiving club or something, but uh, you know, you know, getting up on your roof, doing some, doing some work that, that requires a little bit of heights without hurting yourself. You know, obviously, I mean, there's, there's, unfortunately there's <clears throat> some of these have potential dangers to them, Yeah. but there are some that don't, you know, just going up high in a elevator to the top of a building and looking down without feeling queasy, you know, practicing that can yeah, it's, help it's you just familiarity because it is queasy you look down and you're like whoo getting dizzy you know a little vertigo or something going on so you know I, I don't want to beat that one up too much but you know in general just you know the biggest thing is try something new and exciting um, and instead of feeling fear about that it becomes exciting and, and you tend to enjoy new things and meeting new people and it, it expands your world and makes the only easy day was yesterday. So every day is a little bit of a challenge for you. You had another one called moving toward a goal. 
Right. Uh, you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, if you can stay focused and moving towards a goal, um, that is another way to keep building your mental toughness because mental toughness is part focus. It's also a discipline. And, and the only way you're going to really move towards a goal, whether that's a physical goal, a academic goal, uh, you know, work goal, you know, family goal, whatever that is, is it requires work and it requires daily work. So um, even when you're not motivated, that you might be motivated a week ago, but there's going to be a time when you're tired, don't feel like it, but you're going to have to keep doing it. And that's when discipline comes in to help you move to that next level of just getting it done. And once you have that discipline, that's also tied in with mental toughness as well. In fact, I think one of Jocko's uh, quotes is discipline and freedom, right? If you have discipline, it equals freedom. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> so the, um, uh, the next one you had down, and we've covered a little bit of this, but it was the cold, wet, sandy, hot, humid, underwater, skydiving, et cetera. We can leave the heights out of there now. But, but it's the point about um, it doesn't take much, and these things are pretty available to you to, to push your limits. Um, he, you know, here in Arizona, it's the blazing sun um, that going out at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, which is the heat of the s- the the peak heat and doing a hike on the mountains, uh, even though you have to stay well covered up. But boy, that is a that can be an incredible challenge to go out for a couple of hours on the mountains when it's uh, over a hundred degrees and the heat's oh, blowing. Yeah, absolutely. Down. Once again, very uncomfortable situations. You know, all of those. And if you throw all of them in, into one thing, you got yourself a little mini seal training going on because you know you're cold, you're wet, you're sandy, you're in the dark, you're underwater. You're on top of water in the middle of the ocean. And, you know, those are very uncomfortable situations. Um, and I, th- I think that's kind of why I, I like to talk about mental toughness in a special ops world, just because, you know, so many of the special operations communities have endured, you know, that type of thing in training. So it's not necessarily, I think, something that you're born with. I think you can definitely, to a degree, have a level of mental t- tenacity and toughness uh, that comes natural to you, but it can also be trained. And that's why I put that in there is just to say that, you know, we all go through very, very tough training to get to a certain level in your profession. And whether that's med school, I mean, that is mentally challenging. I'm sure there are many doctors that are tired. There are many, you know, students of, you know, medical students that are very tired, but they keep on pushing to to get it done. So this doesn't just mean, you know, I'm trying to, you know, build a bunch of mental tough special ops guys. This is for everybody, right? And this is enduring every day and succeeding every day by working a little hard, have some discipline, and you will build mental toughness by having these daily challenges um, that you can, you know, perform as immediately as you wake up. Yeah, because one, the the part of part of the challenge of mental toughness, Stu, can can be emotional or psychological, uh, and and not necessarily caused by physical events. You talked about this earlier: family situations, stressful situations, the job, your family, or so forth. And as as you were saying, and you said it uh, at the beginning, but I think it's important to come back to this. Many people can find a way to get through. But getting through and coming out the other end with a, a strong moral compass or coming out as a good human being, you know, that we talk, you and I talk about, that's really the goal is that you've made it through, but at the same time, you've been able to maintain good decision making and you're doing it through that process. And, and the SEAL training does a lot of that. It buds, I know they, they push, you push through to try to make sure that during that process of pushing the physical limits, and the mental toughness that you're maintaining your decision making and your uh, your mental acuity. That's also part of mental toughness is that you come out, you've made good decisions along that process, and that you maintain your moral compass. You're a good human being. So it's it's. I think the thing that you and I are trying to get across here is it's much more than just physically. I can push my way through. Yes, absolutely. You know, thinking under stress is critical. You know to 
to especially the tactical professions, uh, military, law enforcement, firefighters, doctors, EMTs, you know, all those guys are, you know, always tired, you know, but they still, you know, and, and they're still thinking and making good decisions and, you know, not we're, we're human. So we're not going to make perfect decisions every time, but the goal is to be able to engage that thinking part of the brain when you are tired, when you yes. are physically exhausted, when you are heavily stressed. And in fact, we even do that. In fact, we may come back to another podcast on this one as I've been adding a lot of thinking games to yes. workouts. Yes, exactly. And it's a lot of fun because, you know, whether it's, you know, tying a knot, you know, during a rest set while you're really, you know, huffing and puffing and winded, uh, doing it underwater, you know, that's another one, you know, trying to tie a knot underwater. Or, you know, I've been doing, this is really funny, is um, – I get these flashcards that I found that we do with our kids and I get the <laughs> flashcards of just addition and subtraction questions. Uh-huh. I mean, I haven't even stepped into division and multiplication, <laughs> yet. but nine times out of 10, I show this flashcard up and, it, and it's an awkward number. It's like blank minus a hundred, you know, equals 11. <laughs> right. you, know, and you have to kind of like what so no somebody can't come up with quite 111 right <laughs> right you know what happens you know what happens to your brain well you know when we're working out hard that we're putting our bodies Absolutely. through stress we are basically physically you know you know hormonally going through little stress life or death situations i mean we're in a fight or flight mode hormonally when we're working out and a lot of times that causes us to disengage that thinking part of our brain. So anytime that you can add a thinking uh, part to a workout is going to help you be able to have better thinking capability when you are equally winded or tired or, you know, muscle failure and all that. And I think one of the greatest workouts for me is just that pyramid. You know, how many times have you done the pyramid and then, got to thinking, well, what set am I on? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even remember what set I'm on, much Don't less worry, figure out. I'll never do yeah. that. Yeah, I'm doubling my push-ups and <laughs> tripling my sit-ups and doubling my dips. Uh, what, what, it was nine times, what? Nine times three, what is that? You know, so anyway, it, you know, it, that alone is a great way to add, you know, stress to a, you know, and help you, physically work through, mentally work through, you know, being physically tired. Another one is add creativity to your workouts. So we do this one workout where we do a push-up about 50 yards away from a pull-up bar. And then we run to the pull-up bar and we do a pull-up. Then we run back and we do two push-ups and two pull-ups and three, three, four, four. You get the gist on how it works. It's just a little pyramid. But after the fifth set, I say, you can't repeat the same method of travel anymore in this workout. So you got to come up with a different method of getting from A to B every workout or every set. And, like you know, you bear crawl, you fireman carry, you, you know, some guys I, I, I see skipping, walking backwards. Huh. You know, I'm not looking for the hardest idea. I'm just looking for creativity. One of the best ones I saw was this guy, we were on a basketball court and this guy found a chair with wheels on it and pushed his buddy, you know, across the other side of the floor. And I was like, you know what? That's creativity. That's what I'm looking for. That's Don't awesome. do it again, but that's what I'm looking for. That's awesome. Yeah. The last one you had was finding ways to get comfortable when you're in the uncomfortable situation. You know, sometimes just thinking of something else yeah. can help you do that. I mean, there is a form of dissociation that occurs, you know, when you're very uncomfortable, maybe taking yourself back to that little happy place um, is not a bad idea. You know, there's a place for that. However, like I just stated a minute ago, there's also a place for being fully engaged yes. and thinking about what's going on. If you can fully engage your thinking part of the brain, you also physically don't necessarily feel all the pain that's going on with multiple sets of workouts either, right? It's just the same as going to your happy place, right? You can go to your happy place and kind of 
disassociate some of the pain that's going on with a workout, right? Or you can focus on something else very strongly and the same method works to kind of help you eliminate pain. So, you know, the old saying, you know, pain is weakness leaving the body, right? And in fact, I just quoted it on um, Instagram yep. you know, with a nice little Marine Corps quote on there. And there's a lot of truth to that, that it, it really is. But at the same time, it requires you to kind of go to that happy place or focus on something else. You know, especially if you have a job to do, you have to focus on that job and you, you kind of forget about the pain that's occurring. Yeah, that mental activity, Stu, uh, you know, the flashcard idea, those kinds of games while you're doing things to make sure you maintain your mental acuity is a big deal. You know, and in this particular one, I'm not a big fan of uh, anesthesia or, you know, any of those kind of things. So when I get in a situation in where I'm having some kind of medical procedure or dentist or whatever, I try to count backwards using the 1,001 or so you start at 100, 1,100, 1,099 while you're undergoing these, whatever they are. And it gets a little challenging to, to maintain what number you're on. Uh, that's good. I like that. That's a good way to dissociate. You know what's funny, though, is my dentist reads my articles. Oh, right? geez. And so whenever, whenever <laughs> I, I had a filling done the other day and he goes, now, you don't want any Novocaine, do you? I'm like... <laughs> What? How tough do you think I am? <laughs> of course yeah, I want that's... Novocaine. <laughs> not... yeah, yeah, at this point, man, I, I want to find comfort in the uncomfort, right? You know, that is a way to do it, I guess. You know, if you can dissociate like that, you are very skilled to be able to do that. He, he has done it with me a couple of times before. And he goes, you know, it's not that close to the nerve. I think, I think you don't really need it. You know, if you can kind of focus on it, I said, all right, let's try it. And he was right. I said, but, you know, if he goes anywhere near that nerve, I mean, it, <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I said, just shoot me now. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, yeah. So that's my right, first. So, so, so we're almost out of time here, yeah. but, um, but I think everybody's got the point about how they can incorporate these kind of skills into in their daily life. Um, you know, so in summary, you would, you would recommend somebody just finding a way to every single day, test their mental toughness, right? Yeah, absolutely. My, my summary for this, this podcast would be just keep moving, find a goal, keep moving towards it, build habits and that habit will become discipline. And when you find discipline in your life, the mental toughness follows right after it. You know, first it starts off with motivation, but that motivation has to evolve into discipline. And then that discipline will build mental toughness. So how can we get people involved in doing mental tough ideas with what you're doing down there in Sabrina Park? Well, you know, we, we work out every day. We have a program called the Heroes of Tomorrow here at the Sabrina Park Community Center. Um, you can go to heroesoftomorrow.org, you know, check out the program, get involved in any way that you want um, and come join us. You know, the free workouts and they're for people who want to serve military, law enforcement, firefighters. Um, and we have veterans that come in and they're great mentors to these guys. And it's just, it, it has turned into just a group of guys that like to work out for a purpose. And nobody in our group will ever say, why do you want to be in the military? You know, why do you want to be a police officer? Why don't you go get a real job? You know, nobody in our circle, <laughs> does stupid stuff like that which unfortunately i think if you're in that job you've heard it before you know some family member you haven't seen in you know a couple of years and you're at thanksgiving dinner and you know won't you go to college get a real job you know whatever you know so anyway I, if you want you want to join like-minded people like that these podcasts yeah. are for you as well as you know come see us in Sabrina park maryland if you're ever in the area and we'll happily uh let you join our workouts and, you know, hang out with some great Americans. Yeah. But if you want to push the other end, come study with me at Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pal. That's it for, uh, for this one. Tactical fitness report with Stu Smith podcast. Number eight, building mental toughness later, pal. All right. We are out.